Is the LEGO Technic AirTech Clorig 8868 the single greatest pneumatic set ever? Let's find out. This is truly an exceptional build. Despite it having only 954 pieces, it is a very large truck containing many exceptional mechanisms. For example, the crane turns pneumatically rather than using gears and axles like all the modern ones do. Before we take a closer look at all the functions, let's start with the box which can actually open to reveal the sorting tray inside. The top have show some of the important functions. Let's open it up and see what's inside. We get a big yellow sorting tray with all the bags. We can dump all the bags inside each respective tray, though personally I prefer to build from a flat desk rather than a tray. We get six of the following tires, the building instructions which somehow pack the entire model in a measly 36 pages and the B model too. The 9 volt battery box which uses six AA batteries, the electric plate which is like a Lego piece that conducts electricity. You place it under the 9 volt motor and then you can connect it to the battery box. Isn't that fascinating? We also get a weighted brick, a brick base turntable, several Technic seats. I wish they'd bring back these ones. A tiny sticker sheet explaining the pneumatic functions. Speaking of which, we get some brick based cylinders and even brick based pneumatic switches, which can all connect to each other, as well as two massive pneumatic hoses, a clear one and a black one, which you unfortunately have to cut manually, unlike the modern sets. The building process begins with a bunch of studded bricks connected together. Next, put some flat, skinny plates below them. Then, build the two following differential modules which are 28 to the base. Slide them onto the Technic bricks and then secure them with some more Technic bricks. We have just made the foundation of the chassis. Connect the two differentials together with some bevel gears and expand it even more. This makes the drivetrain. Next, you'll want to add some steering modules. Complete the steering mechanism by adding some gears on top of the rack. Look at just how fascinating it is. The next step is to add six pneumatic tubes into the center. This thing looks kind of like the fuel distribution unit in a fuel injected engine. Put it onto the chassis. Next, connect several clear pneumatic tubes like this. Simply insert it into the chassis. Take four of these switches and insert the tubes into the respective switches. Add a circle with a gear on the front. Next, secure long Technic bricks onto the center of the chassis on both sides. You see these two gear racks along with an axle with a gear? The gear racks attach to the two pneumatic cylinders and together they rotate the central axle, which will turn the entire crane. Isn't that absolutely fascinating? Now Naturally, the next section you build is the turntable module which attaches on top. Add a few gears onto the front of the chassis and connect some white cylinders onto the sides. Next, build the following yellow square with a pneumatic cylinder. Just attach it onto the turntable. Put a plate with a gear on the center. This will be responsible for the steering. Add a 9 volt wire here, a seat on the crane, a black crane arm attached to the cylinder. And now here comes the most fun part, adding the motor. Connect it to a big disc using a rubber band. Add a tiny cylinder here. This forms the pneumatic compressor. Next, continue expanding the crane arm. Insert the V6 engine into the front. See those two yellow things? They will make up the claw of the arm. Add the black battery box, the six wheels, and look at the claw rig. It is absolutely gorgeous. Before we take a look at all the functions, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more classic Technic sets with full detailed building process, racing brick style. No pressure though, no pressure. The AirTech Clorig is like a better version of the Arox or the Unimog. Although it technically does not have a gearbox, it makes up for it in its pneumatic functions. First, let's power on the pneumatic compressor by pressing the red button. By flipping one of the switches, we will turn the crane a full 180 degrees. Remember, none of this is done through a gearbox or the motor connecting to the turntable in any way. All of this is done pneumatically. I have never seen a function like this before. Have you? Next, we can play with the crane like usual. We've got three primary cylinders here, two for raising, lowering and extending the arm, and the third one is for opening and closing the claw. The playing experience here is truly incredible, especially whenever you pick up an object and then turn the crane, then drop the object on the other side. It's an incredible feeling because you know that it's two pneumatic cylinders turning the crane rather than it being done through a gearbox. Many people in my comments say that it does not need a gearbox or not every set needs a gearbox and in this particular case you're absolutely right because it delivers in some other aspect like the pneumatically turning crane. When I say a set should have a gearbox, it never has anything else to make up for the lack of a gearbox. The AirTech Cloric though, 
absolutely does. The crane base itself is pretty unique. At the rear here, we see that it uses a weighted brick to act as the counterweight. Weighted bricks are a far more efficient solution than using the Lieber crane style counterweights, which aren't even heavy at all, resulting in you having to use an insane amount of them. The front uses a red Technic seat I was talking about. You could probably add a Technic figure here, and I personally wish this piece would come back. It was such a cool aspect of old Technic. Next, let's look at the drivetrain, which consists of two rear wheels connected to differentials. These are the two classic differentials, each one with 28 teeth. They're connected to the V6 engine. Ultimately, the engine is connected to the drivetrain through a rubber band, which is pretty cool. There is also a fan here, but most importantly, these cylinders are not yellow. Rather, they are gray. I personally wish gray cylinders would come back. The cabin itself is rather boring, but the top does have a hand of God knob. And using that, you can steer the front wheels. Note, there is no suspension in this vehicle, so maybe it's not exactly the best for off-roading. At the top, near the Hand of God knob, we see the black battery box. Keep in mind that this battery box is massive, and you can especially see that if we take off the battery box. However, because the battery box is black, it blends perfectly with the rest of the model. This is unlike modern sets, where if the battery box is not hidden away somewhere, it stands out like a sore thumb. Colored battery boxes absolutely must come back, so that another crawler crate situation can be easily avoided. The model itself looks perfect from all sides. You might say that it's studded and ugly, but in my opinion, that's exactly what makes it so special and so beautiful. I do not like when modern Technic sets are overly paneled up, and in my opinion, that loses what makes Technic so special. With the open studded look, you can truly enjoy Technic for how it was meant to be enjoyed. Anytime there is an exposed gear or some sort of exposed mechanism, I do not think of it as ugly. I think of it as the beauty that makes the model come to life. Truly, the AirTech Clarig was an absolutely fascinating build. I greatly enjoyed it and it was mega extremely difficult for me. Where modern Technic flows naturally and you know exactly where everything will be attached, classic Technic flips your expectations upside down. If you're as much a fan of Technic as I am, you absolutely must give a large classic Technic set a try. The experience is so vastly different compared to modern Technic. This set is truly perfect. The only minor flaw with it is the lack of suspension. But that makes sense for that particular time period of Technic. Perhaps a fun mod would be to add suspension to the AirTech Clarig. Are you hungry for more classic Technic? Click the video on the left for my Space Shuttle review of 1996. And will you be buying the AirTech Clarig? Let me know in the comments below. This is your Unbreak Me here and I'll see you in the next one.